Hello and welcome back to your tutorials for uh, running Butterfly on Grasshopper. In previous video I just showed you how to install Butterfly so you should have Butterfly installed. In this video I'm going to show you how to uh, run your first analysis for outdoor. Uh, this uh, video I will try to keep it quite brief so just I go very fast over the components available. Uh, and I will use the example file. I will do uh, later some videos that I can go in detail and, and talk about every single component and how it works. But now it's basically this video is for you to get started and, and then play around with how Butterfly is set up uh, until I get more time to to do uh, more videos or or hopefully somebody else from the community will take over that and and uh, does the videos in detail about what, what every single uh, component is doing and, and, and uh, what really happens in the, in the background. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and open the example file. So the example files uh, are coming with the, with the installation. Oh, and I missed an A in the name of example. So you can get fixed right now. And hopefully fix it in the installation package. So okay, uh, you can come here, and there is 010 outdoor airflow the gh that we are going to use for this example. So this is a file that shows you how to set up an outdoor study uh, using Butterfly. Uh, the first part up here is the part that you take the grasshopper geometry, creates butterfly geometry, create a wind tunnel because this is an outdoor study. Uh, we create a virtual wind tunnel for uh, for the study that we want. Then here is the meshing, and once the meshing is done, here is the solution, which is the place that you run the analysis. There, as you can see, there are a lot of details for each one, like grading, refinement region like setting up the details for a snappy hex mesh deck and putting the control deck stuff together. Uh, sorry, the, the solution parameters, including control deck and, and props. Again, I'll go over them pretty fast, but I don't go into details. And, and you can feel that I really want to, but I don't have time for doing that. Or I've been told that it's good to have videos that are short so people can watch it until lunchtime. So this is one of those videos. Um, Okay, let's let's check the geometry first. Uh, this is how it looks like. These two buildings that you see, these two cube boxes, are the buildings that I am interested in to run the study and see what is the airflow around these buildings. The other box that you see here is the refinement region, which is the area that I'm interested to be meshed uh, denser in this case, and it's set up here around the building. And I. I think this is not a good idea to make this wire display hidden, especially if you are just getting started with uh, using Grasshopper. So this is where it is created. And by having this, I should be able to go ahead and generate the wind tunnel. Intentionally, I haven't run um, open foam on this machine. So it gives me an error so you can see it and then I go and fix it. But it won't affect us um, I think here because this component doesn't check for any any of that. So all this component does at this point is it will create the case. And by case I mean an open form case. And it will be created under C backslash users, backslash my username, and then butterfly. So this will be your username, whatever it is on your machine. So let's go ahead and set this to true. And as soon as I do this, you can see there are like six points here, eight points here. Okay, I can't even count. So there are eight points here that shows the wind tunnel box, and you get it here. It's points. You can use this to create the box. Founding box. If if that helps for a better visualization. So just preview off, and then I make this union box. So this is the box. So the box is created based on the input geometries that they have. So it takes the height and then it takes the tunnel parameters, which now is left to default to create it. So 
Uh, here you can put the values to say what is the number that you want to be multiplied by the maximum height for the side, windward, leeward. And we're using kind of like best practice numbers. Uh, here is three for, for the windward, uh, three for the top, then uh, two for the sides, and 15 uh, for, for, for the leeward of, of, of the case. And let me go ahead and change the number so you can see how does it affect that. So I change the, like, let's change the top from three to five. Because this is a case, for example, we have a really high wind speed and we think like the wake will be all the way up there. So I just do it five and you see pretty fast because it just does knows your input geometry. So it updates. It's again, like it will change if you change the geometry. So if I, Create the box like this, like this is a very, very tall building. Maybe not that tall, but like taller than what I'm using there. So if I pick this building instead of the buildings that I have there, then you will see you will get a new wind tunnel, which is larger. Not surprisingly, right? And something that you can see there, actually, let me go for a wireframe preview of this one. Something that just happened and might be interesting for people who are not using Grasshopper and are watching this video is, as you can see, this refinement region just got updated based on the size of the new box because this is this is created based on a logic. I didn't draw it. So as soon as you change your geometry, uh, it will update that, that box and then uh, which is the refinement region that I'm interested around and this is going to be helpful uh, very helpful for creating uh, cases that you want to run some parametric analysis okay let's go back to the original geometry that we had this two guys I just delete this here so again this these are the geometries we got the wind tunnel and I'm just going to remove this so it goes to back to the default values. Uh, so this is all you need to know for now for, for about about the uh, creating the wind tunnel. So the wind tunnel is created, and if you are an OpenFoam user, this is where all the files are, and you can read it here. It says it's all written here, right? To see backups plus users and then username butterfly and it's outdoor airflow because I named it here outdoor airflow. So now if we go and where is this folder here? Here you can see there the the, the structure is created. The system and uh, constant uh, uh, folders they have the geometries that you need. This is the uh, this is the refinement region. This is the buildings themselves, uh, and you have a log folder. But as you can see here, the zero folder is still empty. Zero folder will be created when you before you run the uh, the, the solution. And the reason for that is uh, before you know what you want to run, we can't write it here for you. So this is only the geometry stuff. That's the minimum that you need to start running the mesh. So I'll go ahead and run block mesh. Again, I don't go through the details. And here we go, this is what I said. It gave me an error. It says Docker machine is not running. So if you get this, this issue, it means you haven't started running OpenFoam, which is what a butterfly needs to run the analysis. To solve this, I need to go back here and right click on OpenFoam start. And again, I run it as admin. So it will start, and if you have the installation working correctly, it should take less than a minute or a couple of seconds. It's waiting for an IP, take, gets the IP, makes the connection, and then you will see the machine is running. Maybe I can use this time to, to say it as a reminder that you also need to run Rhino as an admin. The reason is if, if you don't, and this wasn't the case for everyone, but then we did it to make sure that we get less uh, failures. But if uh, the way it works, because you, you are 
uh, interacting with a virtual machine, you should have uh, uh, admin privileges. Okay, here we go. This is running. This is all set. You don't need to have this open. The only thing we, which this does is it starts default thing. And, and that's all we need. So I can close this and it's now it's running. How do I know it's running? Because if I run this virtual machine here that you can see this is running, the default is running. You can turn it off from here if, if you want to turn it off at some point. Okay, let's go back. My Rhino model. Again, I come back here. I rerun the block mesh. If you remember, it was red. Then I set it to false again. Set it to true. Here we go. The block mesh is done. I can connect the case to visualize mesh and run it, run that component. And this is the block mesh that is created. Again, you can see you can only see it on the surfaces because loading the inner mesh is set to false. If you want to see that, you can set that to true too. But most of the time, it's not really that that helpful. It doesn't it doesn't provide extra information, and it will be slower. So in this case, it's quite fast, so you don't see the difference. But like if you have a snappy X mesh or something, then you you usually only want to load the the the, the ones on the edges, not 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 the inner mesh. So that was the black mesh. Uh, Next step is to set up the snappy hex mesh. You can see there is a snappy hex mesh dict here that lets you set up the stuff uh, from all the stuff because this is, this uh, this example has sharp edges. I'm I'm setting uh, off the snap part so it will only do castellated mesh, castellated mesh, and it won't add layers. The reason it won't add layers is because the uh, Butterfly geometry that we have here doesn't have number of surface layers. If you want to add layers, then you have to set this thing up here. So, but for this case, again, we don't need it. So let me go ahead and run this. What it does, it will run the snappy hex mesh. Goes through all the iterations. If this take long, probably I'll just cut it out of the video. But if you're running the analysis, it should take similar time on your machine. And then if I didn't mention, uh, the units are in meters and uh, OpenFoam runs everything in meters on, on the, under the hood. Butterfly does take other units and converts them. But then if you are doing that, you should make sure that all the units are converted, all the inputs that you put in, like for the building size and all the stuff. So I, I mean, if, if it's possible, just, just change everything to meters that, that will save you time and you will make sure like everything works fine um, with open foam. But again, Butterfly should support different units, whatever unit you have. And in the background, it should convert them to, to meters. And when it loads them, it, it scales them back to whatever your units are. So now I just loaded the mesh from a snappy hex mesh. You can see the mesh is much denser around here because of refinement region. And then less there because of the like how I have the grading. This may or may not be the, the best meshing that you can do for this example. But again, these are the examples to get you started in they should run in an acceptable time on a laptop machine uh, to make sure everybody can understand the workflow. If you need to really set it up, then you have to go and, and play with all the details of a snappy uh, hex mesh stick and also uh, block mesh and block mesh stick. Which again, I'm trying very hard not to talk about them so this video doesn't get lengthy. So now that I have this and I ran the meshes, if we go back and check our folder. Oh, and did I delete? Yes, I closed that. So I just, just open it again. So now if I go and I check the folder, outdoor airflow, now you can see uh, there are there is a new one for the mesh that is generated for the step one. It's only one because, again, I don't do the snap and the layers. We don't add layers. So this is only one. If you go in constant now under poly mesh, you, you get the copy of the latest mesh that you have, which in, in this case is a snappy hex mesh. And 
under log you can see the logs for all the comments that that we ran we just ran block mesh and a snappy hex mesh this is the full log and if there is an error it will be here we didn't have an error so they're both uh zero so you can, these are all text files so you can you can just open it as a text file and read it if you're on windows uh I think in Windows 10 they finally fixed it, so you can see if it, it doesn't have a slash r slash n. But uh, I use Notepad plus plus. I recommend it um, for other people to use it. And then systems, as we talk, uh, it is there, but still the zero folder is empty. Why it is empty? Because uh, we have no idea what you want to run. So let's go back to Grasshopper component. That's the place that you have all the geometry stuff done. And now you want to put a solution together, what we call a solution. For a solution, you need a case, which is all the data about your geometries. And then you need a recipe. Similar, if you are a Honeybee user, you know the concept of recipe. Recipe is where we, t we tell to the solver, what do we want to do? Currently, we have two recipes available. So uh, for, for, for butterfly, but you can have more, you can, you can write your own if you want. So as you can see, there is one for heat transfer and there is one for a steady incomparable recipe. And I have a hard time to pronounce that word. But uh, for this one, because it's an outdoor air airflow, I'm using this recipe. You can change the turbulence properties, FP schemes, FP solution, residual control, and relaxation factors. Uh, some of them have components here. Uh, some of them, like you, you need to just like you can you can introduce a file. You can do all that stuff. Again, that's a, that will be another video. But for now, just leave everything to default. The other thing which is important is you have a set of solution parameters that are the parameters that will be checked even during the run and before the run. Um, the, the the ones that we will be using right now and mostly being used is the control dict and props so the control dict is is the one that will be checked and uh for for running uh your stuff and these are the ones that we expose uh to the user to, to to change and again it doesn't mean you can't change the rest if you want to change the rest you can create an additional parameter and i think everybody now feels how i'm struggling not to go to the details but again the other thing is props, and props in, in uh, OpenFoam is a post-processing function, but we're using it during the run so we can get a live uh, visualization of the result while the analysis is running. Uh, for creating a prop, you need the points, and these are the points that I'm interested in to when, when the analysis is running to get the results. The results that I'm interested to get is the pressure, and uh, velocity, so P and U uh, are there for that. I create a solution parameter, then the other inputs that you have, so we talked about recipe. There is a decompose part that if you want to run the analysis in parallel. I only have two CPUs here, so I'm not going to do that, but it's as simple as connecting this from here to here, and then the analysis will run in parallel. I won't do that, and I'm recording a video at the same time, so that's not a good idea. Uh, then the solution parameters we just talked about. Then you have an interval here. The interval is, and, and you will get it only in Grasshopper. In Dynamo side, you don't have this input. Is the time that you want, the number of seconds that you want the solution to be updated, the results visualization to be updated. You don't want to make this to be very small because then you will get like recursive updates every one second. And then if your solution is running slower, then it makes no sense. So put it in a number that makes sense. I think by default, it's two seconds or something. For this, I leave it at five seconds. So every five seconds, we get the results loaded here. Uh, then it has a write and run similar again to Honeybee components. Why do we have this? Because the first one, and this is a good practice, is to set the write to true. When you set the write to true, let's go back to the folder. What will happen is now you will have all the zero folder here. And because this is an outdoor condition, like so you have ABL conditions here and initial conditions, you can open the files and check them out. Right? So all of this are created now that, that we said right on the solution level. Why this is a useful thing? Because maybe, again, as I said, 
you want to write and create your case here using Butterfly and run it somewhere else. Basically, you can copy this folder anywhere that you have OpenFOAM installed and then run the analysis. You don't need to, to run it uh, from the from Butterfly, which brings the limitations of running it inside Windows and running it, in this case, inside Grasshopper or Dynamo. That, that's why the write and run are separate. The other reason is you always want to write it first to make sure there is no error in, in the system. If you check here when you write it, the first time, it tells it, it's preparing the stuff and then if there is any value that you are overwriting it gives you uh, a note so for example in control dict uh, we're changing the end time from thousand to six hundred and the reason is i know the solution will be done in in 561 iterations with with this setting but the default is thousand where did this thing change here the end time and then you can change it while the analysis is running too Okay, with that, we have everything that you need to know before you, you can run the analysis. Now I go ahead and set this run to through. And before that, actually, I go and turn off this preview for the refinement so you don't get confused. Let's go. So you can see time is zero here. The, this open this window and it start running it. So time one, time two, time three, and it's going through iterations. And you can see while it's running through the iterations, it is visualizing the result too. So a couple of things that you need to know about running the, what can you do? First of all, this is interactive. So it doesn't pause the grasshopper solution, which is good and bad. It's good because it gives you freedom and it gives you live visualization, but it's bad because if you don't know and you change something that you should not be changing during the run, then you you may execute two solutions at the same time, or you, you may end up change something that you don't really, you should have not really changed. So be careful about using this while it's running. One thing is you can see here that while the analysis is running, so you see time 41, you can see the residual values are changing. But this is not how we are used to see the residual values. This is a component here that can plot residuals for you live if you want. I don't set it uh, to load by default because then uh, you know it will be updated on, on every single run that we have. Uh, and let's check here. So it's still running. And then you can read the values here too. But if you want, you can just set this thing to load. And now. While the analysis is running, you can see how the residual values are converging, how the case is converging, and you can see the residual values here, right, as a graph. I mean, you can go to the top view, so it's easier to see. Here we go. So while the analysis is running, you can you can add notes to this graph and all that stuff. And you can see sometimes it, it, it fails because while the analysis is running, that's trying to write the value. This is trying to read the values, but it's okay. In the next iteration, it will read it. I usually turn this to, to false not, while the analysis is running and just watch the values here. That's good enough for me uh, to know how, how the solution is going. And again, as you can see, the prop values are, are loading while, while the analysis is running. The other thing which is turned off here so this is the side of visualizing the vectors for this is this this. The vectors for velocity, but you can at the same time visualize pressure too. And if there is a case that you have temperature, you can visualize that too. I think this is a very nice feature to be able to to check the, the analysis while it's running. So if it doesn't go in the right direction, you can pause it or anything. So, for example, let's say it's 148 and I see something is wrong and I want to pause the analysis or stop the analysis. There are several ways of doing that. My recommendation for you is one way is to set run to false here. That will do it. That will close this window that, that's running the analysis and do it. The other one is to go and say, okay, it's 169 times. So you just go here 
and set this to 200, for example, in, in, in control dig. So when it gets to 200 runs, it will, it will end, end the solution. Or the most straightforward one is to just close this window that's running the analysis. So 184, I just go ahead and close this. And 189, and done. Because the analysis is not running anymore. So if you check is running, it says no. There is no input. But in a normal way, it was running. The readme will output all you get on the uh, on, on on the strain. You don't want really to connect this to panel because it will it can crash your machine or it can make it very slow in Grasshopper. It will be really slow in execution. So I don't do that. That's why you have an input for the log file. So this is where the log file is for this run. If you want to go and check the log, now we checked everything and then. We think it's good. We want to, to run the rest of the analysis. You just set this to false. And then you run it again. And I'm doing this on purpose to show you something. So you see it will start from time 101. So why is that? Because the component doesn't know your last uh, save or your last result unless you have already set it to be saved. So here, I set it for every 100 runs, after 100 times, just save the result. And after 100 iterations, save the result. How can you change it? You can change this here if you want to have, to have it save in a smaller interval. So right intervals is set to 100. I can go here and say, save it in 25. And again, it's running already, but because I said it's interactive, you can change this value while the analysis is running. And if this update works fine, then here you can see the, the first time that it uh, got to the 25 rounds is 150, so it's now saving 150. When it gets to 175, it should also save it. So just wait un until 175 and that will be the end of this video. Now you can see the result actually looks much better. Close it and then check the residual values. We still need a lot of more iterations. And it runs faster on my laptop when I don't do the recording the video. So 175 here. Okay, so 175, you see every 25, now it's saving. Okay, I hope this video is good enough for you to let you uh, get started uh, with the whole process. I uh, cancel the run from here now. Uh, and you can cancel the right too, but you don't need to do that. This is the result you can see. And then uh, you can see here that I used a component that loads the prop values to, to load the values. There are different ways for doing that, uh, more flexible, that hopefully I will cover in, in, a, in a video uh, later. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested to set up an analysis for an indoor case, uh, watch the next video.